What happened here, Tom? Well, Wolf, let's look first at all the lay of the land, where this breach occurred. This is how your credit card works. You're sitting in the middle here. You've made a deal with a credit card company. You probably get it through a bank of some sort. And you're all working together to buy things like consumer goods and airline tickets and maybe gasoline and other things you might grow at a store here. All of these transactions, every time somebody buys something, somebody else has to get paid. It has to be all processed through so that they get their share, they get their share, and you get the bill. And all of that is handled by the processing center in the middle. That's a company that specializes in crunching all those numbers and making everything work. Now, there is an inherent promise in place by these companies when something goes wrong in that procedure. Usually what they say is, look, if something went really, really bad here, and in truth, you ended up getting some kind of false charge from an airline or from a consumer goods place, and it came through this processing center and came to you, what they say is, we'll stop that. You won't have to pay that. We've all had charges that show up on a credit card that don't belong there in the company. After you talk a little while, often we'll say, no, you don't have to pay for that. That doesn't matter. So why is this an issue if all this information has been stolen? The issue is not that you might get an extra bill on your credit card now, although that could happen with your information being stolen. The processing center in the middle has a tremendous amount of important information about this. It's not about your money right now. It's about the information about you, your credit card number, your account number, your credit limit, the type of account, your address, your phone number, your official numbers of all sorts, and your official name. You know why all this matters, Wolf? Because this is real. It's all accurate. It all relates to a real person in a real place with real income. And that's the value of a theft like this. Not that they could rip off your credit card for something else, but because they could take this number, all this information, and they could sell it to other people around the world who want to buy legitimate information. Wholesalers, and when I say wholesalers, these are illegal wholesalers because what they would do in turn is then they would take that information and they would sell it again so it's been sold by the person who bought it to a wholesaler who in turn then sells it to a variety of scam artists who may then take your information to open new accounts and then use those new accounts to buy products which they may resale and on and on and on this goes so the truth is what they've done is they've taken your identity and created a whole bunch of new accounts that you may not know about for quite some time until they're hugely in default and many thousands of dollars are involved. Are you going to be involved in paying for that? Maybe not, but it can make a huge headache for you trying to clear up your credit and get your name back again for things that you knew nothing about. Robert Manning from the Responsible Debt Relief Organization spoke to us about it earlier today and how much trouble this can be for us. Some people have spent fifty, sixty thousand dollars in terms of hiring attorneys, taking time off from work, traveling to different courts, testifying at local police hearings, filing with the Federal Trade Commission. I mean, this is a nightmare where the dimensions of the crisis for the individual are really hard to calculate. It's a little bit hard to follow, Wolf, but the bottom line is this is not so much about somebody taking your credit card number and charging something that you'll have to pay for. It's about them taking your identity and selling it over and over and over again to people who may charge many hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of goods. You may not have to pay for that, but getting your identity back so that you can get a credit card again, so you can get loans, so you can go on with your life, that can be, as he said, a nightmare. Well, that could be terrifying. Uh, here's the question. What are the credit card companies saying about this? What are they doing about it? Well, what they're saying about it is, is what credit card companies usually say is we will protect the people who are affected by this. We'll, we'll deal with this breach. But the trick is this. A credit card company, and we're not targeting Visa here. We're just using them as one example. There are many others, MasterCard, American Express, all sorts of companies that may be caught in things like this from time to time. The simple truth is they may protect you up front, Wolf, but once it's gone through this process where your identity has been sold to a wholesaler and to other scam artists around the world, at some point, many banks, many credit card companies may say, hey, that's not us anymore. That's a whole different endeavor, and now you're on your own. Tom Foreman, thanks very, very much.